Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, a few weeks ago on my Twitter account, I published a photo of a bunch of my friends and myself that I took using only the moon as my source of illumination. And since that time, we've had a lot of people write to askmark at adorama.com as well as my Twitter account saying, how did you do that moon shot? Well, that's what we're going to talk about this week. In fact, we're going to use only the moon and the stars as our source of illumination. And I'm going to go outside and show you how to do all of that. Well, before we do that, I want to remind you, if you're not familiar with the histogram, well, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit as I explain what I'm doing. So if that's new to you, make sure you review episode 33 of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -One so you know all about the histogram, how to read it and use it. And once you know that, you'll be able to do these night shots with no problem. Well, without further ado, let's go outside and I'll show you how to take some great shots with just the moon as your source of illumination. Well, I'm outside in the middle of the dark at night and uh, we just drove sort of north of the city, outside of the city lights so we don't have a lot of light pollution. And uh, we're sort of by this highway so you might hear some cars. I want to talk to you about how I've set everything up and some of the gear that I've used. One of the most important things to use actually is a flashlight. And if you use a normal flashlight in your hand, you're not going to be able to use your hands to actually set all your camera settings. And so I highly suggest you get one of these uh, headlamps that is normally used for camping. Now this one actually has a really nice light. It's actually a red light. And what that allows me to do is not ruin my night vision, but I can still see all these settings on my camera. The other thing I need to make sure I bring along with me, of course, is a tripod and then a cable release. If you have one, you can use that as well. Now before I show you the settings on the camera, a couple other things we need to talk about. The first is the file format that you should use, and you should use RAW file mode because shooting in RAW will allow you to do a lot of post-production work. Uh, most notably, you're going to want to change some of the color temperature to really fine-tune how your photo looks. But to get started, what I suggest that you do once you have your camera set to RAW is set your white balance to incandescent because the moon is going to uh, match that white balance uh, most closely. So now that you know that, let me show you what I've done down here on my camera. Now what I have is I have my uh, camera set on my tripod and then um, to make sure I have everything set, I've actually looked through the lens, composed the image, and behind me here we have a lake and a mountain and some stars, and you'll see in a second when I show you the pictures that we take. Um, so I set that all up, looked through the lens to make sure I have uh, my composition correct. And then what I've done is this camera actually has a virtual horizon, and so I've used that to make sure that my camera is level, because it's really hard in the dark to tell if your camera is level. The other thing you can do is you can get a little bubble level that will sit right on top of your camera, and you can use that to make sure that you're not all wonky so that you're uh, set up just right if you're taking shots of the ground. If you're taking shots of the sky, just the stars, it's not as important to do that. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to set my focus. Now, uh, to focus your camera in the dark, autofocus is not going to cut it. You're not going to be able to do that. So what I've done is I've put my lens on manual focus mode, and then I uh, have looked on top here, and there is a, uh, a focus range. It'll tell me the distance that I'm focusing. And I set my lens to infinity, and that will work just fine. So that's in manual focus mode. And then the mode on the camera, well, uh, aperture priority or shutter priority can work. You can actually get some very interesting things, but for the best results, I recommend that you shoot in full manual mode. And I'll explain in a little bit why that's so important, because you'll be able to really dial in your settings. So once I have everything set, I've composed my image. I have my uh, camera set to manual focus in manual mode. I need to figure out my actual exposure. And so what I've done is I've set my camera here and I've set it to F9 and I chose that because I want the, uh, the depth of field to have a little sharpness to it. Uh, but I don't want my aperture to be so small that my exposure time turns into 10 minutes or something crazy. I've actually set my ISO, contrary to popular belief, it's at 200. And it's not up somewhere crazy like 1600 or really high. I want to keep it low so that I can get longer exposures to smooth some of the things out. And I can actually see clouds moving and all kinds of interesting things. So I have my ISO to 200. I'm at F9. Now the next thing I have to figure out is how long to let the shutter go. So what I've done is I've looked in here and I've rolled my shutter down to 30 seconds. 
and on my meter uh, my camera is telling me that I am two stops underexposed. Now that meter reading is going to be a little bit off because of the uh, sky set against this big dark mountain here so things might uh, not meter exactly right but that gives me a starting point and when I look and say well it's two stops underexposed I need to figure out some way to correct that. Well the way I can correct that you can hear behind me coyotes, it's pretty awesome. Well, the way to, uh, to correct that is I can use a cable release like this one and I can set it to um, an extended period of time. And so what I've done is I know I'm two stops underexposed at 30 seconds. So if I go to one minute, that means I'm one stop underexposed. And then to two minutes, that means that I, I should have the proper exposure. So then what I'm going to do once I have that is I'm gonna push the start button on my camera and then my camera will start shooting. We'll wait for two minutes, and once the camera is done, we'll take a look at the histogram to make sure that my meter reading is correct. So we'll let the camera finish, and then we'll take a look right after this. All right, well, my camera just finished taking the exposure, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review that exposure, and then I'm gonna look at the histogram. And when I look at this histogram, it shows me that I'm actually underexposed a little bit. I wanna expose this a little bit more. It looks about a, a one-stop underexposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, instead of having this at two minutes, I'm gonna set it to four minutes, so that'll give me one more stop, and then we'll uh, make sure that's all set. Now, one thing I didn't mention uh, before is when I had my uh, sh uh, shutter set to 30 seconds, to make this work, I actually have to set this where it says bulb. And once I have that set to bulb, then that will allow me to uh, use this timer. And if you don't, well, it'll time out at 30 seconds. So make sure you have your camera set to bulb so that it will go for a longer period of time than the max 30 seconds. So once I've done that, I've set this up to four minutes. I'm gonna take another exposure and here we go. And so we'll let this wait in the magic of video editing. I'll show you what this looks like four minutes later. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take a look at this and here we go. Yeah, the histogram looks great and looking at full view, and this looks like a pretty darn good picture. The crazy thing is this is lit entirely by the moon at ISO 200 F9 and a shutter speed of four minutes. So now that we have that done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around here. There's all kinds of interesting trees. We're gonna take a look at the sky and we're gonna meter that and try to get some of those stars. And we're just gonna start shooting around and see what we can get at night. Again, all I'm using is the moon as my illumination. Well, that was a lot of fun being outside at night shooting those photos. Now, just a note, and some of those we had to go into post-production and change the color temperature and uh, just the exposure just a little bit. And that's what you're going to find with some of these shots, that it's going to need a little bit of post-production work. And so it's not a big deal to do that. And what I challenge you to do is to try this yourself. And if you get some shots that are great, please post them to the Adorama TV Flickr group so we can all see those. Another thing is I post a lot of behind the scenes photos when I'm making these episodes of our staff and what we're doing in the studio and I post those to, our, uh, to my Twitter account and you can follow me at jmarkwallace if you'd like to follow along. And as always, please, if you're on YouTube, subscribe or subscribe on iTunes so you can see every single episode and not miss anything. Well, if you have a question about photography, you can send that to me at askmark at adorama.com and I just might use it on an upcoming episode. Well, thanks again for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Oh, um, can you guys hear that? That is crazy. That is awesome. Yeah, we'll cover it with B-roll, I guess. <laughs> or we can just do a something. Yeah.